James Martin, the darling of housewives, caused much laughter among his friends when he was spotted last weekend looking through the windows of a jewelry store on Mayfair's old Bond Street with his new partner. Ultimately, the attractive TV chef, who hosts multiple shows on ITV, has consistently declared that marriage is not his destiny. However, only a few weeks into his courtship with socialite Kim Johnson of Knightsbridge, the couple is already visiting one of the most well-known shopping locations in the world for engagement rings, which is home to upscale jewelers like De Beers and Tiffany and Company. James has always insisted that he won't get married, but one acquaintance tells me that he first spots Kim outside of a jewelry store. You can see the jokes coming. Yes, you can. Martin has never shied away from declaring that he believes marriage is a complete waste of money and that he would much rather purchase a flashy automobile than walk down the aisle, all in line with his blustery Yorkshireman attitude. Speaking with an interviewer five years prior, Martin, whose father oversaw the culinary operations at the Castle Howard estate when he was just 12 years old and began working in kitchens as a pot washer, stated of marriage, no, it doesn't interest me in the slightest, mainly because I've catered for so many weddings. That's okay, I appreciate those that do it, but I'm content with myself. It's not necessary for me to spend $60,000 a day, I'm fine, thank you, upon my friend's visit, they open my garage and I say, these are my babies, these are my things, but you know, it's all subjective, isn't it? Could this have altered, though, after Martin, 51, was spotted chatting with Johnson last Saturday while sporting a casual black gilet and gray baseball cap? Undoubtedly, Stern Martin has developed feelings for a very strange person. Living next to Harrods is personal trainer Johnson, the ex-wife of multimillionaire businessman Arun Nair, who was married to Liz Hurley. She is more frequently spotted at upscale London locations like Annabelle's and Scott's Restaurant, which are very different from Martin's favorite cozy taverns, including Yorkshire's Stapleton Arms, where he claims to have the best deep-fried scampi in Britain. The fact that Martin only shocked his acquaintances by divorcing his 12-year partner, Louise Davies, in December makes their new connection even more surprising. In 2011, while working on the set of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Martin had met TV producer Davies. Soon after, they moved into what they both thought to be their forever home, a picture-perfect country mansion that also served as Martin's studio for his ITV shows. Davies was credited with contributing to the success of his business, which has reportedly brought him a net worth of approximately £4 million. According to a friend, they always seemed like a great match, she was the person who kept things going behind the scenes, and he was the famous one. Louise is a well-known figure in the field and is incredibly charming and down-to-earth. She loved James and appeared to accept that they would never get married. And who has managed to win Martin over as the new glamorpus? Probably Johnson's most well-known marriage was to Arun Nayer. In 2016, she became his third wife. Five years after they first met and six years after he and Liz Hurley split up, they were married in a lavish two-day ceremony on the French Riviera. Despite the extravagant wedding, one can only speculate about Martin's thoughts on the cost of such an occasion, Johnson and Nayer called it quits in 2017, only a year later. In an attempt to heal her wounded heart, Johnson turned to Prince Andrew's acquaintance and well-known party girl Caroline Stanbury, who is now married to a Spanish football player and lives in Dubai. Stanbury is about 18 years younger than Johnson. On the London social scene, the two women were frequently spotted together. Johnson, 51, hasn't just gone out to parties with Stanbury, she's also spent time with the Beckhams and was previously cited at London's renowned Beat nightclub with David Gardner, David Beckham's best friend and football agent. Kim is a true focal point among the socialites of Knightsbridge. My acquaintance told me that everyone knows her. She went from being a young woman on the party scene to something of a name thanks to her marriage to Arun, you can always find Kim in the most elegant settings, where she is generally deep in discussion. She is quite stunning. She is extremely outgoing and well-connected, having known almost everyone in the industry. She's the kind that simply stops by a private members club for a laid-back night out. In fact, 
The couple would frequently sneak away for romantic weekends away to Somerset's upscale Babington house when they were dating Nayer. James and Kim are very different, according to an acquaintance of Martin's. While James might occasionally be a little cranky, she is lively and outgoing. His desire in living the high life is non-existent. Despite his fame, he is far happier at home, away from the spotlight. However, since opposites do attract, it wouldn't be shocking if this relationship endures. However, Martin, who was raised in the market town of Malton, North Yorkshire, has had a colorful romantic history. The chef previously referred to Barbara Broccoli as the love of my life. Barbara Broccoli is a Hollywood producer and the daughter of renowned James Bond producer Albert Cubby Broccoli. When Broccoli was just 29 years old and a rising celebrity in the culinary world, Martin first met him at a charity auction in 2001. She was one of the most well-known behind-the-camera figures in the film industry and 12 years older than he was. Broccoli, musingly, won Martin at that auction, giving a staggering £18,000 to a charitable cause in exchange for him preparing her dinner. Martin claims that she was so taken aback by his cooking that she quickly rehired him to prepare her 41st birthday dinner. They simply clicked. The extraordinarily affluent Broccoli then launched him into a world where he met A-list celebrities like Nicole Kidman and Halle Berry and enjoyed hot and cold running luxuries. She did, in fact, lavish her much younger lover with gifts, one of which was a Picasso painting that Martin had liked when they had visited the exhibition together. After seeing the Tiffany ring on Ronan Keating's finger during a visit to the now-cancelled TV show Top of the Pops, she even went so far as to purchase him one. Ironically, though, their four-and-a-half-year romance ended because of Broccoli's pledge to purchase the self-described petrolhead and Aston Martin. It was just an on-the-spot thinking, it wasn't like it was my birthday or Christmas. That was an important turning point in our relationship. I felt in my heart that there would always be an imbalance, Martin subsequently remarked. But he did acknowledge that splitting up with Broccoli was possibly the daftest thing I have ever done in my life. It was a big mistake, he wrote about their breakup in his 2009 memoir, Driven. I foolishly disregarded advice from others, and I promise never to do it again. Three years later, Martin started dating Davies. Martin is considered by ITV executives as a darling of the network since so many women tune in to watch him. Though she was certainly not as well known as his former partner, Martin was enamored and moved quickly from his Hampshire house to live with Davies. Friends believed they would be together indefinitely. When Martin isn't watching television, a person who knows him well tells me that he prefers to avoid the cameras, he likes to work and keeps his head down when it comes to his private life. He was simply an ordinary man and Louise. They went on pleasant walks and engaged in other typical activities with their buddies. Only on Wednesday, when the images of Martin and Johnson surfaced, was their breakup made public. His representative promptly clarified that there was no overlap and that he and Davies had discreetly parted ways several months prior. After a few turbulent years together, Davies and his partner parted ways. Throughout his cooking show, James Martin's Spanish Adventure, she had faithfully supported Martin not only through his fight with cancer but also through allegations of bullying from his ITV co-workers. Some of his crew members allegedly lost it in front of their co-workers and had their schedules altered so they would only get a few hours of sleep. Martin was accused of repeatedly, inappropriate, intimidating and bullying behavior by those who worked on the show. In another purported incident from 2018, it was stated that Martin grew enraged with a member of the film crew when his drain clogged at his house while they were filming a James Martin Saturday morning show. It happened at the same time that he was receiving treatment for facial skin cancer, which was discovered in 2017. Martin also disclosed in November of last year that his cancer had resurfaced multiple times and that he was taking a break from his television duties in order to get it sorted. Martin added that lessons had been learned from the claims in a statement released jointly with the production company Blue Marlin. ITV supported him in spite of all of this. As one worker described him, he's their golden boy.
James is like catnip to the female watchers, according to an insider there. They needed to figure out how to let it go. It was a really tough time for James and Louise, a friend continued. She was glued to him and would accompany him everywhere. He had been keeping his sickness a secret from the public, and the struggles he faced in private were terrible that he could have ended his career at ITV at that moment, but Louise kept him continuing. Martin's life appears to be coming together again today. Even though he was very happy in this week's photos, he did not manage to smile. And he informed his 750,000 Instagram fans with excitement that he was back filming on Wednesday. He seems to have moved on from his turbulent 2023. Whether the well-connected Johnson could finally be the first lady to persuade him to walk down the aisle is still to be seen.